Hello and welcome to another video of me being boring. Actually, I mean Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So yes, another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop video. And in today's video, I'm going to experiment with buck converters and buck boost converters. Right, so this is the circuit that I'm going to use. Now, I cannot take full credit for the circuit, because part of that goes out to Great Scott, and this is his circuit. But this circuit here is my own variation of it. Now, in the original circuit, he used a microcontroller, but instead, here, I am using a TL494, and also his circuit did not have any current feedback, so I have added it here. At least I wasn't using an Arduino. And I will stop talking like that. So anyway, like I said, in his circuit he used a microcontroller, but I'm using a TL494, and I just designed this all myself by experimenting with the chip. So, how the circuit is going to work, um, don't pay too much attention to all this at the moment, well, we're going to get to that later on, but what the circuit's going to do is it's going to feed a little bit of the output voltage back into pin 4, which is going to control the chip's PWM. So, if the output voltage is too high, it will reduce the pulse width, and if the voltage is too low, it's going to increase the pulse width, which is going to affect the output voltage. And for the current feedback, I'm going to use a 0.1 ohm rather beefy resistor connected between the source of the output MOSFET and the ground. So, as the current increases, the voltage here will increase and that will be fed back into pin 16. And if the voltage goes beyond a certain threshold, the chip will just simply shut off. Now, what I've got on the breadboard isn't exactly like what I've got here. Um, this resistor here isn't there, and neither is this resistor here. And this variable resistor, which can set the current limits, I've just replaced with a fixed resistor of 15 kilo ohms. Right, so here is our circuit on the board, or what I've built up so far. Here is our TL494. And you might have noticed that I've got a couple of potentiometers here. Those are to simulate the voltage and current feedback. So this one will simulate when the current increases. And that's connected between the positive and the ground. And then we've got the center pin going through this resistor and into pin 16 of the chip. And this potentiometer here, we've got the positive going into this 10K resistor here. Then that's going into this pin of the potentiometer. The other pin is connected to ground, and the center pin is connected to pin 4. And also over here, I've got my multimeter to measure the voltage at pin 4, just, for the, um, just so you can see what kind of voltage range that we'll be dealing with. Right, so... Let's turn it on and see if it works! So all I need to do is just connect the power. And you can see right away we've got a nice square wave. So the chip is doing what it should be doing. So now I'm going to simulate what happens as the current at the load increases. And you should see in a second or so that should shut off when it gets past a certain threshold. And there it goes. Let's bring that back down again and it should start up. There we go. So you can see there's a very fine line between where it starts and where it stops. I mean, I'm barely turning that at all. So now, let's adjust the voltage at pin 4. I decided to use a logarithmic potentiometer here, just because that would be a little bit easier. So, this is what's going to happen if the voltage is too high. As you can see, the pulse width gets narrower and narrower, until it eventually just stops altogether. And if the voltage is too low, I'm lowering the voltage, and as you can see, it gets wider and wider. Now, there is one slight problem, and that is, you don't really want it to go beyond 50% duty cycle, 
and unfortunately with the way I've got the chip wired up yeah you can see we might have a little bit of a problem here but anyway next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a basic buck converter circuit one that isn't regulated but just to experiment with using the TL494 as the oscillator and we'll see how it goes well, during my infinite stupidity during that last demonstration, I forgot to have the meter turned on, so we couldn't see what the voltage at pin 4 is. So, I'm just going to briefly do that again, this time with the meter on, so you can see how it looks. Also, it'll help if the power was plugged in as well, it would actually do something. Alright, so we're going to go from where it goes completely off. It's a little bit of a dodgy connection here, so if I can stabilise that. Alright, so about 3.2 volts and it's turned completely off. Let's just see where that comes back on again. So, right about there, about 2.6 volts is where it completely goes so thin that it just shuts off altogether. And let's go all the way back. I hope my head's not getting in the shot. And we're right about, um, yeah, it's jumping around a bit. It's about 45 millivolts. So let's just put that back to about 50%. Are we at 50%? Uh, this is 48. Let's see if I can get that down to 50. There we go. So we're now at about 50%, and as you can see, at pin 4, we're about 1.1 volts. Right, so I guess it's time to start building the buck converter. So right now I have an IRFC44 MOSFET connected to the TL494, but the problem with the TL494 is that if you want to connect a MOSFET to that, you need a gate discharge circuit, which is what I call it, I don't actually know the proper name for it, but that's what this transistor and this diode are doing. And if you want to look at the actual circuits, that's what we've got right there. Now, I haven't put in any of the current limiting stuff at the moment because I'm not bothered about that right now, but let's just connect our circuit to the power and observe the waveform on scope. So let's just hook up the power. And as you can see, we've got a nice square wave. Now this is the waveform at the MOSFET's gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the gate discharge circuit and you'll see that is not as good, so I'll connect the MOSFET directly to the TL494. And we can do this. And, um, there we go, now you can see the waveform is not as good. You can see it's sort of discharging the gate, but it's not quite getting there. Right, well, rather than just build the buck converter, I decided to go straight ahead and build up this part of the circuit here without the photos showing it all in the camera which is this part all around here so I'm going to power this up and we'll see what we get I have absolutely no idea what this is going to do it might reduce the voltage, it might boost the voltage at this point I have absolutely no idea also I better turn my scope on so this will monitor the waveform at the base of the um, I mean the gate of the MOSFET the meter is measuring the voltage across this 100 ohm resistor, which I'm using as the load. So I'll just briefly power this up and see what we get. Can you see the meter? Right, let's just do a brief power up. Is it going to do anything? Okay. We have about 9 volts. So I'm going, I think it actually spiked up to about 17 volts and then settled down, but it's kind of good because I'm only using 16 volt capacitators. So I'm going to adjust this and we'll see what it does. Now I'm powering this on about maybe 11, 12 volts, so I'm just going to adjust this and see what effect it has on our voltage. So we are going up. Oh yeah, we are boosting. I better not boost it too much because we were at 17 volts then. I don't really want to make my capacitor explode. 
or burn out my resistor, so let's turn it all the other way. And voltage is going down. We've got a little bit of ringing there, but 2 volts, 5 volts, 6 volts, 7 volts, 9 volts, 10 volts, 12 volts, 13 volts, 14 volts, and I'm not going to go any further than that because that capacitor is not going to be able to take that for too long, but that is working really well. In fact, it's working a lot better than I expected it to. Since the coil I'm using is just one that I wound randomly with a random core and just wound a bunch of wire around it, using a trifle of winding just to get the most out of it, but this is working better than what, we ex than what I expected, so... Get the um, come on, stupid connection so we can buck and we can boost. Okay, so just before I add the regulator, I thought I'd better change this capacitor. It's a little overkill, but I think it'll do. It's about the same amount of microfarads. This is a 330, I think the original was a 220, but this one's rated for 200 volts. So, yeah, I think we're not going to have a problem with um, exceeding the capacitor's voltage there. What I'm going to do is I want to see exactly how far I can turn the voltage up before things start getting... Well, just we'll see how far we can go. Okay, we're at 17. The waveform seems to be getting down a little. Can we go up to 20? Can we go up to 20? Oh, oh, whoops, something smoking. That was just a load resistor, but I think that pretty much proves the circuit works. Yeah, I got a little toasty. Alright, I'm going to try to add regulation to this in a minute, but I'm a little bit worried about doing that because I've changed the inductor for this one, and I get much better performance out of that. I think this one had just far too much inductance. This one measured about 40 microhenries, I think, when I measured it, and this one was about 200. So anyway, I changed the inductor and I turned it on, and with no load, even with the pulse width really low, you know, even with the pulse width really thin, I was getting almost 50 volts, and then I changed the MOSFET to an IRFP840 and tried it again, and with seconds I was getting over 100 volts. So let's actually just turn that on again and see how high that voltage actually goes. I don't think it will go up to 200 volts, which is what that capacitor is rated for, but if it does, I will switch it off. So I've got the meter here measuring the voltage across this capacitor which is where the load would also be connected, if there was a load. So let's turn it on and see what voltage we actually get. Okay, so already we've got nine, no, 100 volts, 120 volts, 140 volts, 150 volts, it seems to be slowing down a little, 170 volts, will it hit the 200 mark? I think it will actually. Yeah, 200 volts, so I'd better turn it off before we exceed the limits of that capacitor. So no way I'm going to touch anything in there. So I'm just going to do a little demonstration here why we need regulation. I've got the thing set to about 13 volts. I did try to set it to just on 12 volts, but with this new inductor it's very twitchy. Anyway, I've got this fan here, which I'm going to connect up as an additional load. I have the 100 ohm resistor in there. I can get this wire in there. Let's start up the fan. And you can see the voltage has now dropped down quite considerably. As if I could just get that wire to stay in there. There we go. So I'm going to have to adjust this again to get to the voltage 
the 12 volts we had before. So that's why this circuit needs regulation. Now I'm not going to pull the fan out because the voltage is going to shoot up if I do so, but you get the general idea. Right, well we're well on our way to regulation now. So I've put in the little op-amp, which is this part right here. I don't have the exact resistors, so here I've had to use 22Ks and here I've had to use um, 4.7Ks. But we can still work with that. So at the moment it's giving out about 12.2 volts, as you can see right there. And out of the op-amp we're getting 2.4 volts. If I decrease the input voltage, that's increasing it, so decrease the input voltage. So we're at 5 volts, you can see we're now down to 1.3 volts. Increase the voltage. So at 14.4 volts now. And you can see we're at 2.8 volts, so what we're getting out of here is about a fifth of what we're getting out of there. I better just turn that down because you know, the uh, I don't really want to completely toast that resistor. Let's just see if anything's getting hot. Maybe just the faintest hint of some heat coming off the MOSFET. Yeah, but I can really feel the heat coming off that resistor. Still within tolerance. So what I think I'll do, I'll connect a potentiometer up to the output of the op-amp, so one end goes to the op-amp's output, the other end goes to ground, and then I'll connect the centre pin to pin 4, and we'll see what that does. We'll probably smoke a few resistors, but, well, let's see what we get. Well, this is a little bit of a fail. I wouldn't say it's a total fail, but it's not a complete success either. So anyway, I've put the feedback circuit in with the op-amp, and I've connected the op-amp up to the TL494 through this potentiometer. I do have a much more precise control over the voltage, so I can turn this down, so it's bucking, and I can turn this up, and it's boosting. So that's the good news. Bad news is, if I try to connect up some extra load, and as you can see the voltage just dropped right down. It's not completely bad news though, because if you look on the scope, when I connect up and disconnect the load, you see how the waveform is now? And when I plug this little fan in, well not little fan, but See how the waveform got thicker? So it is trying to compensate there, it's just not compensating enough. So yeah, not a total success, but not a total failure either.